let us consider a mass of liquid, again, accelerated up an inclined um, angle alpha from the horizontal. Still, the angle that the water surface makes with the horizontal is set natin as angle theta. And to solve this one, consider again a particle and then analyze the forces na nag sa particle na to. We have again weight, the normal force, and the reverse effective force that, that is again acting in the opposite direction of the acceleration. Since the motion is upwards at an angle alpha, the angle that the reverse effective force makes with the horizontal is also angle alpha. Tama, but again, in the opposite direction. No, we can use the equilibrium equation na, or use the force polygon to finally solve your angle theta. We can actually form a right triangle right here. No, we just have to get the x and the y components of your reverse effective force with respect to angle alpha. That is, ano ba yan? Our EFX mo, or the X component of your reverse effective force, that is MA cosine of alpha. And your REFY, the Y component, that is MA sine of alpha. Tama? Finally, to solve angle theta, let's again use the tangent function. Tangent theta is opposite over the adjacent, wherein your opposite side is the X component of your reverse effective force over the adjacent side is this one, the weight plus the y component of your reverse effective force. Okay, working this out, ano yung makukuha natin? We can actually cancel out again the, the mass. Okay, so we have right here a cosine alpha all over g plus a sine of alpha. But take note, this is only for upward na motion. What if downward? at an incline pa din yung, yung track mo. So, gawin mo lang, you just have to substitute the plus with a minus sign. A vessel containing oil is accelerated on a plane inclined 10 degrees with a horizontal at 1.5 meters per second square. Determine the inclination of the oil surface when the motion is downwards. So, recalling our formula in getting the angle of inclination of the oil, I mean of the surface, that was tangent theta is equal to the x component of your acceleration, a cosine alpha all over gravitational acceleration plus minus the y component of your acceleration, a sine alpha. Yun sa drawing natin, I mean sa problem, sabi dyan, downwards yung motion mo. So, magiging minus yan. Tama? And tingnan natin kung bakit yan naging minus. So, balik tayo sa figure natin dito. Consider again the particle, the force is acting dyan, the weight, the normal force, and your reverse effective force. Okay? Drawing the force polygon of this um, particle right here, separate natin yan. Yan. Okay? As you can see, walang right triangle, di ba? I mean, hindi right triangle yung nabubuo mo. Pero, you can actually generate a right triangle. Paano ba? E di, kunin mo muna yung x and y component ng reverse effective force mo. O yan, e di, nakikita nyo na ba? So, to get your angle theta, tangent theta that is equal to the x component of your reverse effective force, which is, the, di ba tangent theta is equal to uh, opposite over the adjacent side. The opposite side relative to your angle theta is the x component of your reverse effective force all over the adjacent side of your angle theta that is weight minus the y component of your reverse effective force okay so kayo na dito yung tiningnan lang naman natin is kung bakit or kung paano naging negative yung if, if yung motion mo is downwards okay na so i substitute natin yung values natin again the acceleration is 1.5 cosine alpha, the inclination of the ground surface, that is 10 degrees, all over the gravitational acceleration, 9.81 minus 1.5 sine 10 degrees, giving us a value of theta that is equal to 8.79 degrees. And that is the final answer. What if you will bring a container with a liquid in it in an elevator going up with an accelerator or with a constant acceleration. 
Did you ever wonder if gamma height pa din ba yung pressure at any point dun sa liquid mo? Okay? So, now, let us look closely sa container na hawak mo and consider natin isang liquid column dun with height H and area A. The water level now will remain horizontal though it is accelerated up because we only have here vertical na mga forces. And ano-ano yung mga forces na nag-aak ulit sa column na to? Basically, the weight which is again equal to the mass times gravitational acceleration. The normal force or the pressure force that is equal to the pressure times the area A. And lastly, the reverse effective force acting opposite the direction of the acceleration. So if the, the acceleration is upward, then your reverse effective force is downward. Applying again the equation, the equilibrium equation, we can sum up forces vertical. That is, your pressure force F minus the weight minus your reverse effective force. We are to this one. We have F is equal to the weight plus your REF. Okay, we know that your your pressure force is equal to pressure times the area. Weight is mg. RF is ma. Okay. So working this equation, we can cancel. I mean, we can factor out the mass. Okay. And we know that mass is equal to weight over gravitational acceleration. And weight is we can also express this as gamma volume. Tama? Where in the volume is the volume of your column, which is equal to the area times the height of the column. Tama? Canceling out the area right here, therefore, the pressure formula at any point that is equal to the unit weight of the fluid times the height times 1 plus A over G. And take note again that this formula na plus is for motion, accelerating upward. Accelerating upward. Okay? So, you should you should specify, you know, the, the motion and the the sign of the acceleration. An open tank is filled with gasoline with a specific gravity 0 0.80 and is accelerated vertically at 5 meters per second squared. Determine the pressure at the point 3 meters below the surface if the motion is, unang tanong, upward with a positive acceleration. So na derive na natin kanina yung pagkuha ng pressure no if your if your liquid with together with a vessel is accelerating vertically. Okay? So ano nga ulit yun that was pressure at any point is equal to the unit weight of the fluid times height times 1 plus minus the acceleration over the gravitational acceleration. And again, you have to be specific with the sign of your acceleration. Okay? So, this time, sabi sa problem, upward with a positive accel acceleration. So, this one is magiging positive. Tama? Kasi yung motion is upward and then, nakaspecify din na you have a positive na acceleration. Tama po ba? So, I think we can diretso na substitute the, the values. Take note that this is a gasoline so, the unit weight of the gasoline is 0 0.80 times the unit weight of the water, 9.81. Tama. Times the height, that is, ilan nga ulit yun? 3 meters times 1 plus the acceleration is 5 over 9.81. This is a positive acceleration. Okay? Giving us a pressure at that point that is equal to 35.81. 54 kilo pascal. So for the next problem in this situation, still determine the pressure at the same point 3 meters below the surface if the motion is downward naman with negative acceleration. Still the same yung formula ang gagamitin natin. Ito pa din. Pero again, mag-change lang yung signs natin. Sabi dyan downward, so this one is minus, I mean negative, I mean plus minus. And then your acceleration is negative. Okay, substitute ulit the value, unit weight of our gasoline, that is 0.80 times 9.81 times 3 meters times 1 minus the acceleration is negative over the gravitational acceleration, 9.81. So, magiging positive lang din to. Tama, yielding the same answer, that is 35.54 kilo. Pascal.
Okay, so balikan natin yung kanina. Diba kanina, um, dun sa hemispherical tank tsaka sa prostomacone, nirelate natin yung radius or yung diameter dun sa head H. Okay, so gawin natin is magsimula tayo sa hemispherical tank. Okay, ano ginawa natin dyan? Di ba kumuha tayo dito ng differential volume? And tong volume na to, may thickness na dh and cross-sectional area as. So, meron siyang radius r dito or diameter na to, b. And yung, and yung volume na yan, may layo yan na h mula dito sa orifice. Okay, so, try natin ngayon um, i-relate yung diameter sa H or try natin i-model yan using your uh, using stat mode. Okay, so, saan tayo pupunta dito? Okay, so, punta tayo sa mode then, press 3, no? Stat. Okay, so, ano pipiliin natin dyan? Okay, so, pipili natin dyan is yung number 3. That is in a form of A plus BX plus CX squared. Okay, so number 3. Then, meron tayo dyan 2 columns, X and Y. Now, ano yung lalagay natin sa columns na yan? So, yung X, ito yung layo ng point papunta dun sa orifice. And itong Y, yan naman yung cross-sectional area to sa point na yun. So, considering this hemispherical tank, okay, at point zero, so saan yun? Itong point na yun. No? Ano yung cross-sectional area na makikita natin dito? Of course, that is zero. Next, pag pumunta tayo dito sa point na to, okay, gaano kalayo yan sa orifice? Okay, that is 1.5 meters. Ano yung cross-sectional area na makikita natin doon sa point na yun? Okay, that is pi over 4 times 3 squared. Since diameter nito is 3 naman. Now, ang minimum requirement nito is dapat meron tayong 3 points. But, defined lang dito is yung 2 points na doon. No? So, gagawin natin is imi-mirror natin or gagawin na natin siyang sphere. Okay, so ito yon. Okay, ano yung third point na yon? Eh di etong point na to. Now this point is may layo na 3 meters papunta dun sa orifice. So 3 meters to and cross sectional area okay, 0. So lagay natin to dito. 0 to 1.5. Ito 3 this cross sectional area at this point 1.5 is pi over 4 times 3 squared okay, so equals then press natin yung AC so gawin natin is kunin natin yung yung A I-store natin yan sa variable A, yung B, i-store natin yan sa B, and yung C, i-store natin sa C. So, saan natin kukunin yun? Okay, so, shift 1. Okay, so, 5, no? Yung reg. Okay, yung 1, i-store natin to A. Then, next, shift 1, 5, yung B. Or not in sub B. And shift 1. Sorry. Shift 1. Uh, 5. Red. Store not in sa C. Okay, so na store na natin yung A, B, and C. So, ano ba yung na model natin dito? Okay, so, ang na-model natin dito is yung cross-sectional area ng differential volume na to at any depth 
h. So, ang a s natin ngayon is a plus b x plus c x squared. So, paano natin kinukuha yung time nito? Okay. Tulad nung kanina. Okay, so, ano yon Integral of a s d h over q in minus q out. Okay, so, ano yung limits natin? Di ba, uubusin natin yung laman dito sa hemisphere na to. So, head 1 natin is 1.5 and yung head 2 natin kay 0. Take note, para hindi ito magmat error, okay, kuha tayo ng limit na sobrang lapit sa 0. So, okay na ito, no? 0.0001. Tulad nung kanina. E di, etong AS natin dito magiging A plus BX plus CX squared. So, this is DX all over Oh, wala tayong Q in. So, zero to. Negative. Okay, yung Q out, same pa rin sa kanina. Kanina, si AO square root of 2GH. So, kayo nang bahalang maglagay nito. Okay, 2GX. So, we have limit 1.5 to 0.0001. So, type natin sa calc U. Okay, balik tayo sa mode 1. So, the integral of A plus B X plus C X squared over negative 0.6 pi over 4 times 0.1 square. Okay, times square root of 2G. X. Okay, so this is 1.5. And ito, point zero 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 one. So, equals Okay, so, lumabas dyan 387.1 seconds. So, same din sa kanina, no? So, ito ay mabilis na pagbumodel lang ng cross-sectional area at any depth pitch for this type of um, volume. Okay? Now, sunod natin yung frustum of a cone. Okay, so ito yung frustum natin. The diameter of the top base is 5 meters and diameter of the um, bottom base is 3 meters. Okay, so again, magre-refer pa rin tayo sa kung saan located yung orifice. So, ito yon. Eddy, considering this location, we have head 1 equals uh, 2.3 meters. And head 2 okay, equals 1.5 meters. Okay, so, ayan yun. Now, ang gawin natin dito, okay, ganun pa rin, kuha tayo na ang differential volume. Okay, so yung differential volume na to, may thickness dh and may cross-sectional as. So, itong as na yan, may diameter d at any depth h. Okay? E di, i-model natin ngayon ito sa stat mode. So, punta kayo sa mode 3, 2. Mode 3, 2. So, that is in a form of A plus BX. Okay, so meron ulit tayo dyan, X, Y. Okay, ano tong X? Yan yung layo ng point papunta doon sa kung saan located yung orifice. And yung Y, hey okay, diameter. So, ano yung minamodel natin dito? Yung diameter ng uh, differential volume at any depth. Okay, so, considering this as our first point, 
Okay, ano to? Ang layo nito ay 1.5. Okay, ano yung diameter niya? Eh, di 3. And kung ito naman yung second point, layo niya at papunta sa orifice, okay, 2.3. And ang diameter niyan is 5. Then, press natin yung AC. O, lagay muna natin dito. Okay, then press AC. Okay, ganun pa rin yung gagawin natin. Kunin natin yung A, store natin kay A. Yung B, store natin kay B. So, shift, 1, okay, 5. Yung 1, store natin kay A. Next, shift, 1, 5, yung 2, store naman natin kay B. Okay, so, yan na yun. Ano yung minodel natin dito? Yung diameter ng differential volume. So, therefore, diameter is A plus BX. Okay, paan natin kukunin yung cross-sectional area ng volume na yan? E D, pi over 4 D squared. So, A plus BX quantity squared. So, ano ba yung time? Diba? We have AS DH okay, over Q in 0 okay, add the Q out na lang to. So, ano limits natin dito? Head 1, 2.3 and head 2, 1.5. I-substitute lang natin dito. Okay, equals integral of pi over 4 times A plus BX quantity squared DX. Okay, over Oh, negative Q out. Same sa kanina. CAO is square root of 2GH. Or, in this case, X yung designation natin sa kanya. So, 2.3. Ito, 1.5. Okay. So, we have time. Oh, type muna natin dito. Then, press equals. Okay, so that is 352.5 seconds. Okay, so same din sa kanina, no? So, ito ay isang way lang, no? Nung pag-solve nung problem na to by means of modeling the cross-sectional area of the differential volume at any depth H. Okay, so for the cylindrical tank, tong part na to, okay, so... May direct formula na tayo dyan, since constant naman yung cross-sectional area. So, pwede na natin gamitin yung formula na naipakita ko naman sa inyo kanina. So, let us say pumulot ka ng lupa. So, sabi nga nila, ba hindi ka daw tunay na civil engineer kung hindi ka pa nakakahawak ng lupa. O yung iba kasi nun, sa laboratory, ayaw humawak ng lupa. O kung sino pa yung mga mukhang lamang lupa, eh sila pa yung maarteng ayaw mapahiran ng lupa. Okay, yeah. So, eh, sabi lang naman nila yun, no, dapat daw nakahawa ka ng lupa. So, so, balik tayo dito sa discussion. Kung i-examine natin yung soil na inyong nakuha, ganito po ang kanyang magiging itsura sa kanyang finest particles. Bubuo yan yan nung dalawang parts lang. Ano po yung dalawang parts na yun? Ang parts na to, yung brown dyan, that is the soil solids. Tapos, yung mga distansya o yung pores sa pagitan nila, yan yung tatawagin natin mga voids or pores ngayon alam naman natin sa natural state nyan may moisture talaga yan okay? kaya magkakaroon yan ng tubig doon sa ibang points ng voids so sa madaling salita yung voids na yan ay binubuo lamang ng dalawa binubuo lang yan ng water o kaya nung air kaya nga tatawagin din natin na ang soil ay three phase system. O bakit mo nasabi na three phase system? Kasi nandiyan yung tatlong system or tatlong phase no. So ito yung solid para doon sa soil particles, tapos liquid naman para doon sa water and gas. Para doon sa air doon sa voids. 
basically meron tayong 3 states or phases ng soil. So, throwback ulit tayo nung soil mechanics laboratory nyo nung college, no? So, ang sabi ng professor nyo, kuha daw kayo ng soil sample. E di, syempre, ano yung una nyong gagawin? Una nyong gagawin, hihingi kayo sa ibang kagrupo na masisipag ng soil sample para makasali kayo sa experiment, no? Yan, ito na yun. Kunyari, nakakuha na kayo ng soil sample. Ang unang state na yan, wherein wala pa kayong ginagawa sa kanya na kung ano, kasi kung titingnan natin yung kanyang soil particles, Binubuo yan ng tatlong phases, okay? Yung solids, tapos yung water and air. Kasi wala pa naman kayong ginagawa dyan, tama? Paano natin tatawagin yung phase na yan? Tatawagin natin yan as yung partially saturated. Oh, pasensya na yung sulat, no? Partially, partially saturated soil. Okay, kasi doon sa ibang, sa ibang parts ng voids, may tubig, sa ibang parts is air. Bale next naman, sabi ng professor nyo, i-oven nyo naman yung soil. O, dito natupad yung pangarap natin na maging culinary art student. Ang difference lang, lupa yung niluluto natin. So, ang gagawin natin dito, lalagyan natin yan, i-oven dry natin yung lupa, and kapag ma-oven dry natin yung lupa, edo syempre, wala na yung tubig dyan. Okay, mag-evaporate na yun. O, di, ang matitira na lang dyan, yung solid and air na lang. Tatawagin natin yung soil na yan as yung oven dried state ng soil. Bali, next naman is yung third phase and ito yung tatawagin nating fully saturated soil. So, sa case na to, lahat tong voids dito o yung pores sa pagitan ng mga lupa ay babalutin na ng tubig. O yan, punoy na lang natin. No? Basta walang matitirang air voids dyan. Ang mangyayari, lahat ng volume ng air ay na-cover na ni water. So, tatawagin natin yung soil na yan as fully saturated soil. Kung maalala nyo siguro itong part ng soil mechanics na to, eh, puro formula, puro pagsasaulo lang, no? Indirect substitution. Pero take note guys, hindi lang tayo dapat basta memorize ng memorize at saka mata-mata lang, no? Daig mo pa maging uchiha doon. Mamgekyo pero, dapat naiintindihan, no? And, alam natin kung saan sila galing. Alam natin kung paano sila i-derive. And to understand further the weight-volume relationship ng soil, we are going to use the first phase na pinanggit ko kanina, which is yung partially saturated. And this time, hahati-hatiin natin siya sa kanyang respective parts. To understand more about weight and volume relationship, let's take a look at this figure right here. So, ito yung ating soil sample. Binubuo yan ng soil solids, water, and air. Ngayon, para mas mabilis natin silang makita, hahati-hatiin natin yung parts na yan. Let us say, ganyan yung itsura niya pagka hinati-hati. Ito yung ating air particles, ito yung water, at ito naman yung soil solids. O, dilalagyan natin ng dimension yan. Ang ilalagay ko dito, sa right part, is yung dimension, dimension para sa volume. And dito naman is yung dimension para sa bigat. etong point na to, papunta dito, syempre yan ay para sa air, isiset ko yung volume ni air or V sub A. Next naman, isiset ko tong length na to mula dito papunta dyan as yung volume ni water. Tapos, same din dito para sa volume ni soil. Huwag niyong isipin na length yan, ha? para hindi lang kayo malito, no? Siniset lang yan na volume. And mamaya mas maintindihan niyo kung bakit natin ginan yan. Dito naman sa left side is yung weight. So, ito, weight ni air. Tapos, ito naman, weight ni water. Then, finally, dito, ito yung weight ng soil solids. O kung, di, kung titignan natin tong unang figure na to, o di ang mangyayari dyan, So, sa bali, ditong side na to, tatawagin natin yung letter V. So, bakit letter V? That is the total volume ng soil. Nandoon na lahat. Tapos, dito naman sa left side, yan yung total weight nung ating soil. So, bali, ang total, total na to, total ng tatlong yan, yan yung tatawagin nating total volume. And itong dalawa, kung papansinin natin itong dalawa lang, no? E yan yung volume lamang ni voids yung dalawang yan. Okay? And dito sa right side, ay sa left side, uh, left side, ano yung total weight dyan? 
E di bali ang magiging total weight dyan, e di pag adin mo yung tatlo. Tama, weight ni air, weight ni water, and weight ni soil. Pero kung titingnan nyo, may weight ba yung air na yan? O kunyari, wala kayong magawa, tinimbang nyo yung hangin. May mapapala ba kayo doon? O syempre, wala. Wala mang bigat yan eh. Therefore, negligible na yan, hindi natin papansinin si weight ni air. Ang matitira na lang para doon sa weight is weight ni water and weight ni soil. It is desired to calculate the consolidation settlement of the 4 meter thick clay layer shown in the figure. So, ibig sabihin ito yung 4 meter thick na clay layer. That will result from the load carried by the footing measuring 4 meters by 2 meters in plan. Assume the clay to be normally consolidated and using 2 is to 1 method. So, first question niya. Ito po yung figure natin na Sabi niya dyan. Calculate the initial effective stress at the mid height of the clay layer. Diba kapag kinuha ko yung initial effective stress, di ba yun yung vertical effective stress or the overburden pressure? So, ibig sabihin, ito yung effective stress at the mid height ni clay layer. Tama po ba? Sabihin ko yung mid height ni clay layer, sabihin ko designation is letter A. Halimbawa, kukunin ko dito yung stress natin stress natin at point A na yan. So, ibig sabihin, kung gitna yan, 4, ito is 2 meters. Tama po ba? So, kapag kinuha ko ngayon yung value ng initial effect to stress niya, that is equal sa, lagyan ko ng designation A, ha? is equal to, kasi nagyan ko ng point A. That is equal sa, from the ground surface to point A, that is equal sa, di ba, ito, Kaya lang may question pala ako, ha? Since kukuha tayo ng effective stress under a foundation, anong reference point ko ngayon? Yung base on foundation or yung ground surface? O, post muna natin. Pag-isipan nyo muna. Kung kukuha ko ngayon ng effective stress ng under of, sa under a foundation, under a foundation, ha? Anong reference point ko ng pagkuha ng effective stress? Base on foundation or yung ground surface? Tandaan mo lagi. Kapag kumukuha ka ng effective stress, effective stress is always measured at the ground surface. Di ba kasi sabi ko lang yan kanina, no? Hindi mo kailangan magkamali. Okay. So, ibig sabihin from the ground surface to point A, that is equal saan? Ito is yung 6 meters high na yan. Di ba dry yan? So, that is 6 times 16. That is plus 2 times 18 minus gamma ng tubig. Tama. Plus, kalahati nito, that is 2 times 19 minus gamma ng tubig. So, kapag kinuha ko po dyan yung effective stress natin at the mid height of the clay layer or yung mid height ko, that is point A, that is equal saan? That is 130.76 kilopascal. So, ibig sabihin, this is the correct answer for question number one. This is the correct answer. Okay. Question number two. Sabi niya dyan. Calculate the induced stress at the, ano, induced stress at the mid height of the clay layer. Since ang pinapagamit niya is 2 is to 1 method, ang gagamitin ko ngayon, kukunin ko ngayon yung stress ng tatlo. Kaya ng tandaan, ang pinapakuha lang niya is induced stress at the mid height. Diba meron tayong induced stress sa top, sa mid height, tsaka sa bottom? Na kung saan kapag kinuha ko yung prismoidal doon, ang tawag doon, yung induced stress na mismo. Tama ba? Ang gawin ko, isolve ko na lang yung tatlo. Kasi gagamitin ko naman yung sa pagkuha ng delta P, ba? Para nga, pag kinuha natin yung cell settlement mamaya, no? So, unahin ko muna. Kapag kinuha ko yung induced stress sa top ng clay layer, anong sabi ko sa inyo kanina? Diba, kopihin mo yung load. Ano po ba yung load natin? That is 2,000 divided by Anong i-divide ko dito? Since top yan, diba sabi ko sa inyo kanina, kopihin mo lang yung length plus ano ang i-add ko dyan? Kung nakikinig ka kanina, anong i-add ko? That is only the difference in elevation from the base of your foundation papunta sa top ng clay layer. Anong difference in elevation nila? Ang sasabihin ng iba dyan, is 4 meters kasi nga sabi nila nandito sir yung water table yan kasi yung sample ko kanina 
Pero tandaan mo, yung water table ko kanina nasa interface between sand and clay. Interface ibig sabihin kung saan nag-unit sila. Ngayon, wala sila sa interface. Ito yon. From the base of your foundation to the top of your clay layer, ilan yung difference elevation? That is 6. Tama. So, ibig sabihin that is 4 plus 6. Ito naman is 2 plus 6. So, kapag kinuha ko po dyan, yung value ngayon ng induced stress natin sa top ni clay layer, that is equal saan? That is 25 kilopascal. Ito po yun. So, kapag kinuha ko yung induced stress sa mid-height, that is equal saan? Diba sabi ko, kopyahin mo lang yung load, kopyahin mo lang yung length, plus, anong i-add ko? From the base of your foundation to the mid-height of your clay layer, that is equal saan? That is 8. So, ibig sabihin, ito rin is 2 plus 8. So, kapag kinuha ko po yan, ang induced stress natin sa gitna, that is equal saan? That is 16.667 kilopascal. So, ibig sabihin, yan po yun. So, ibig sabihin, ang tinatanong nyo kanina, induced stress at the mid-height. Diba, ito na yung tamang sagot. So, ibig sabihin, this is the correct answer for question number 2. Pero, isolve ko na lahat kasi nga, yung last question dyan, settlement, di ba? So, isolve ko ngayon yung change in pressure sa bottom niya. Anong gawin natin? Kopyahin mo lang yung load. Kopyahin mo yung length. Plus, from the base of your foundation to the bottom of your clay layer, ilan yung difference elevation? That is 10. So, ibig sabihin, eto naman. Okay, kapag kinuha ko yan, that is 2 plus... 10. So, kapag kinuha ko po dyan, yung induce, induce stress sa bottom ni clay layer, that is equal saan? 11.905 kilopascal. Ngayon, kapag kinuha ko dyan, yung induce stress sa clay natin, eto na yung induce stress sa clay natin, or sort charge sa clay layer natin, that is equal saan? Ano yung formula? That is change in pressure sa top, plus 4 times the pressure at the mid height, plus yung change in pressure sa bottom divided by 6 or the prismoidal formula so that is only direct substitution so kapag kinuha ko ngayon yung value ng delta P mo dyan, that is equal saan the value of your delta P that is 17.262 kilopascal so ibig sabihin ito yung delta P ko tama next question nyo dyan, question number 3 Calculate the consolidation settlement of the clay layer if it's normally consolidated. Since that is normally consolidated, ano yung formula lang natin? Napakadali po. That is CCH divided by 1 plus EO. Logarithm of that is PO plus delta P divided by PO. Ngayon, di ba meron na akong PO na kung saan 130 yan, di ba? Ngayon, meron ba akong CC? Wala. Meron ba akong H? 4,000. Meron ba akong EO? Meron. That is 1. Meron ba akong delta P? Meron na. 17. Diba? Diba ang CC natin, anong gagawin natin? That is 0.009 LL. Ilan ba yung LL natin? LL minus 10 yan, diba? So, that is 40. Tama. So, kapag kinuha ko ngayon yung CC ko dyan, that is equal saan? Kapag minultiply ko yan, 9 times 4, that is 36. That is 0 0.36. Tama. Since given na yan lahat, pwede ko na bang i-direct substitution na lang yan? O, direct substitution. S is equal saan? 0.36 times 4,000 divided by 1 plus 1. Logarithm of, ano ba ang PO natin? 130.76 plus ang delta P natin that is 17.262 divided by 130.76 so ibig sabihin kapag kinuha ko ngayon yung settlement dyan that is equal saan? that is equal to that is equal to 38.76 3 millimeters. So, ibig sabihin, this is the correct answer for question number 3 niya. Kaya lang, di ba, may sinabi ako sa inyo kanina, kapag kumukuha kanina ng delta P, di ba yung delta P natin, pwedeng 
ang maging value niya is magiging eto or magiging eto. Kasi nga, di ba ang kinukuha natin settlement? Di ba yun yung settlement sa gitna ni clay layer? Di ba ito yung induced stress sa gitna ni clay layer? Ibig sabihin, pwede kong gamitin yan. Kasi nga, ito talaga yung stress at ang ni clay layer. Kasi nga, itong 17.262 hindi yan yung induced stress sa gitna. Another method lang ito, no? So, ibig sabihin, anong gagawin natin? Bakit ba karaniwan ginagamit na eto pwede to or eto pwede to? Di ba kanina, sinol po yung settlement na gamit yung induced stress talaga sa clay? Di ba ito yon? Di ba ito yung average ng tatlong yan, ng prismoidal, di ba? So, ibig sabihin, kapag etong 17.262 na to, halimbawa lang ha, Instead na ito yung ginamit ko, halimbawa ang ginamit ko yung PM, na kung isan equal yung PM, 16.667. Ngayon, di ba magsasolve ko yun yung ng bago nating, uh, bago nating uh, settlement, di ba? So kapag kinuha mo dyan yung bago nating settlement, ano magiging, magiging bago natin sagot? That is 37.514. Ito yung magiging settlement ko ngayon kapag ang ginamit ko na delta pi ko yung 16.667. Ngayon, tanungin kita, ano ang difference ng dalawang settlement natin? Ano mapapansin mo? Di ba kapag kinuha ko yung difference ng dalawang yan, di ba ang makukuha mong difference ng settlement nila? That is only 1.2 millimeters. Alam mo ba kung gaano kalaki ang 1.2 mm? Tingnan mo sa ruler kung gaano kalaki. Nag-aaway kayo ng 1.2 mm na halos neglect, halos negligible na. So kaya nga kapag kumukuha ka ng settlement, sabi ko nga sa inyo kanina, kahit alin diyan ang gamitin mo, ang magiging sagot mo the same lang. Gaintindihan po ba? So ibig sabihin kapag ikaw nasa board exam kahit anong dyan ang gamitin mo, ang makukuha mo, that is always the nearest value. Pero huwag kang masanay sa nearest. Ang gawin mo, instead na pumili kang nearest, isolve mo na lang ang dalawa. Kasi nga, sigurado ako, isa lang naman sa choices na yan ang lalabas. Nagkakaintindihan tayo ha? Okay? So let's proceed. Tunda, last question niya. If the coefficient of volume compressibility is 0.0005, meter squared per kilonewton, calculate the settlement. So, ibig sabihin, ang binigay niya ngayon sa number 4 is ano? Coefficient of volume compressibility na kung saan ito tinuro na to sa first part. Tama? So, kapag kinuha ko ngayon, ano yung formula natin ng coefficient of volume compressibility? Anong formula natin sa formula nyo dyan? That is A sub B divided by, that is 1 plus E sub O. Na kung saan, ang pwede niyang is, is, isulat is 1 plus E sub 1. Pero tandaan mo, ang E sub 1 natin lagi doon, that is always the initial void ratio. Nagkakaintindihan ha? Ito, equal din yan saan? That is also equal to the value of delta E. Tama po ba? That is delta E divided by delta P multiplied by 1 plus E sub O. Kasi kaya nga, yung coefficient of compressibility natin or yung A sub B natin, that is equal saan? That is delta E divided by delta P. Tinuro yun na yan sa inyo. Ngayon, pinapakuha niya ngayon ang soil settlement ko. Tama po ba? Kapag ang value daw ng coefficient of volume compressibility ko is equal saan? That is 0.000, that is 005, square meter per kilonewton. Ngayon, Sir, paano ko, Sir, kukunin ang settlement natin na in terms of coefficient, coefficient of volume compressibility? Paano ba yun makukuha? Tandaan mo lagi. Kapag ikaw naguguluhan, pag-isipan mo mabuti, ha? balik ka lagi sa general equation. Tanungin kita, ano po ba, Sir, ang general equation ng soil settlement? Ano yung general equation? Delta H is equal sa an. That is delta E times H divided by that is 1 plus E. This is the general equation ng soil settlement. Ngayon, since tinatanong niya ang settlement in terms of coefficient of volume compressibility, 
pwede bang pag-isipan natin ngayon? Pwede ko bang sabihin kung F yung coefficient of volume compressibility, di ba equal yan dito? Pwede ba yung delta P ko ilagay ko dun sa kaliwa? So kapag nilagay ko yan, that is equal saan? That is M sub B delta P is equal saan? That is delta A divided by 1 plus E. Oh. Tama po ba? Ngayon, nakikita mo na ba ang kaliwanagan? Tama ba? Siyempre, nakikita ko na, sir. Kasi nga, eto, saan mo yan makikita? Di ba eto yan? O direct substitution. Settlement is equal saan? Etong delta A divided by 1 plus E o yung part na to saan equal? That is M sub B delta P times H. So, ibig sabihin, this is uh, the another uh, formula for getting the soil settlement in terms of coefficient of volume for possibility. Na kung saan ito nakikita mo to sa mga textbook, di ba? Pero di mo naiintindihan kung paano nangyari na naman. Gamit ka ng gamit nang hindi mo naiintindihan. Yun ang problema, di ba? O ganito. Sabi ko nga sa inyo lagi, kapag hindi mo alam yung direct formula, tanungin mo sa sarili mo lagi kung saan mo lang nakikita yung tinatanong niya. O settlement, dito yun. Anong given niya? O efficient volume compressibility, saan ko yung nakikita? Di ba? Ito yun. O ngayon, saka, saka mo i-manipulate yung mga formula. Nagkakaintindihan para makuha mo yung tinatanong niya. So, ibig sabihin, this is the equation ng pagkuha ko ng settlement in terms of coefficient of volume compressibility. Ngayon, direct substitution. Ano yung ano natin? Settlement is equal saan? Anong M sub B ko? Yeah, given na sir. 0.0005. Tama ba? Tatlong 0 lang na. Okay. Multiply by delta P. Na kung saan yung delta P natin kanina, ginasolve na natin yan. That is equal saan? 17.262. Multiply by. Ano po ba ang height ng clay ko? Ang height ng clay ko, di ba? 4,000 yan. So, ibig sabihin, kapag, ko, kapag kinuha ko ang soil settlement niya, that is equal saan? That is 34.524 millimeters. So, ibig sabihin, this is the correct answer for the last question.